guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, appreciate you guys checking out my content. I'm trying to move slightly away, just a little bit on the outside of regular men's content where I complain and bitch about women. Although that will continue with a Giselle Bunch and Tom Brady story I have coming up here and I'll, I'll record after this one. <clears throat> but I do want to talk about topics that are affecting men, society, the world, food, crime, everything else you know, um, the economies, because this, I think, affects men more than women, because the the states and the governments are certainly fine and happy to protect women and help them out and give them programs and support them along the way. And the the men are just kind of left out there to rot. If you remember, uh, Brittany Griner, I think her name is, the uh, six foot, I don't know, three foot tall dude, I mean, uh, woman, uh, that w- that took illicit substances to Russia and got arrested, and then we traded in, I don't remember his name, the Merchant of Death, <laughs> a, uh, a very bad Russian man. Uh, we traded him uh, to get uh, Brittany Griner back, and and she had actually really broken the law, like took in, she took substances that shouldn't be in Russia to Russia, and boy, it was all over the media, everybody cared. But nobody seemed to care about Gonzalo Lira, or better known as Coach Red Pill, uh, who probably had, I don't know, several hundred videos over here on YouTube, just giving general life advice to men. Uh, Some of it I agreed with, some of it I didn't. Um, I I liked Coach Red Pill's uh, presentation uh, when he did his YouTube videos, and he was one of the first content creators that I found on YouTube. I did not watch YouTube, I don't know, for the first 15 years it was in existence. You know, I pretty much thought it was cat videos and PewDiePie, I don't know, doing crazy stuff. Um, So when I did start kind of getting into the red pill stuff, Coach was one of the first ones uh, that I used to watch. Well, the Biden administration, as you know, he tried to escape. Uh, He crossed the border. They snagged him up. Uh, he, he, He was held in Ukraine for speaking speaking against Ukraine and 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 they called him a Russian I don't know apologist or whatever and you can say and I I think I would be in agreement with this you could say um it wasn't very smart to be in Ukraine and talking about you badly about Ukraine but it's supposedly a non-corrupt very free wonderful country that America needs to support no matter what Uh, Unfortunately, it is not. So I don't think he was very smart talking badly about it while he was there, and they arrested him for it. And when he tried to hop over a border, they snagged him and brought him back. And that was the end of that. No one's really heard much from him. Uh, But uh, an article by Kurt uh, Zendulka uh, and uh, Christina Wong came out yesterday. And I said, hey, it looks like they're talking about uh, Gonzalo here, I want to read this and I wanted to pass this on to you guys that maybe you care, maybe you want to hear how awful uh, the administration is for both of our countries, Ukraine and uh, uh, the United States and see, hey, uh, they'll go they'll go to arms of the earth for a woman uh, to get her out of jail, but for an American journalist, they're like, nah, we don't care. Uh, so from Breitbart, exclusive American citizen journalist sitting in Ukraine prison, State Department confirms as Biden begs for billions more to protect Ukrainian freedom. Uh, While lawmakers on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. debate sending billions more to military aid in Ukraine, an American citizen journalist, Gonzalo Lira, is languishing in a Ukrainian prison on allegations of spreading Russian propaganda. Throwing into the question the state of uh, status of free speech in the supposed democracy, the Biden administration argues is worthy of more tax dollars. The Biden administration is asking Congress to approve another $24 billion for Ukraine for now through the end of this year, which would add, uh, add to the $113 billion that Congress has committed to the country since its war with Russia began in February of last year. President Biden on Tuesday at the United Nations argued that the investment in Ukraine was an investment in the future of every country that seeks a world governed by basic rules. Uh, let me put a pin in that. Um, right now, we've got open borders, and we've got millions of, of people flooding, mostly fighting-age men, flighting, fi- uh, flooding across our border, bringing fentanyl, bringing other, bringing other things, other problems. And yes, some of these people are good people, and some of them are bad people. We don't know which is which, however, because we're really not doing much to stop them, 
and many of them are throwing away their passports before they come across the border, so we don't know who they are, so they could give us any name and we wouldn't be able to track them. Uh, you don't have a country, and that is a country that doesn't have a set of basic rules. When you're, when you're prosecuting uh, the, the person that's running against you in the uh, next upcoming election, and you can say, well, yeah, but you know, Trump did some bad stuff. Yeah, so did Biden, so did Obama, so did Clinton, so did Bush, so, you know, so did all of them. But the fact that, so I don't know, I, I don't want to go down that path, but we're not a country um, that has basic rules anymore. And, and it, that bothers me because that's going to be $134 billion we've sent to Ukraine, except we still haven't taken care of anybody in Palestine, Ohio, that had the train wreck and poisoned the entire area. We haven't done anything for Hawaii. We're not doing anything for our basics, our own citizens that are here. How many people here do we have that are homeless or that are struggling with addiction or something else? And they're like, yeah, we're not going to. I mean, we could give you know, all those billions uh, to programs that'll help that. But the problem is the money never makes it to people that actually need the help. It's the, it's, you know, it's the people that set up the programs that are getting paid $300,000 a year um, and paying off their friends and their contractors. And I saw something today where they were setting up tents and I forget where it was. It was San Francisco or LA or something like that. They were setting up tents and they, they said, uh, all the money that they're spending towards the project. And someone did the math on it, and it turned out it was $24,000 per two-person tent that they were putting up with a couple of bathrooms in the area. This is unsustainable. And I think a lot of people, I've not been much for um, the conflict that we have over there because the problem is, I, I hate to say this, I kind I mean, I think a lot of us knew Ukraine was going to lose eventually, they didn't have enough men. They didn't have enough manpower, um, you know. And and so what's happening is in the end, Ukraine's still going to lose. It's still probably going to give away the couple of regions that Russia wants. But in the meantime, they've also ended the lives of half a million men. That's the part I have the problem with. It's like, can you not see far enough down the road to protect these guys? So I think it's just blowing smoke up our backsides here to say, oh, well, we're doing the right things. And in the meantime, there are a lot of, people that are struggling in a lot of, you know what I mean? So let's not pretend that, that we're this great nation that's doing all these wonderful things when we don't even take care of our own people. Uh, they say, however, the administration has been much less vocal about Ukraine potentially violating the rights of an American journalist who is currently detained in Ukraine for his reporting. And in a speech at the UN almost entirely devoted to Ukraine, the status of Gonzo Lira was not mentioned once by Biden. Again, they, they care about the female basketball player. They don't care about the male reporter. Uh, Lira, a dual citizen of the United States and Chile, who was living in the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv at the time of the Russian invasion, is reportedly facing between five and eight years in prison under Ukraine's wartime propaganda laws. The American uh, citizen journalist was initially arrested in May of this year on suspicion of producing pro Russian propaganda on his YouTube channel, where he questioned the narratives around the war presented in the legacy media and from the Zelensky government, including suggesting that Moscow was provoked into invading by Ukrainian government and the expansion east of the American-led NATO military alliance. Now, what Gonz Gonzalo says there has been brought up by heads of state here in the United States, um, ambassador to Ukraine. There was a lot of people back in 2014, 2016 that said the same thing. So this is not highly controversial that Gonzalo said this. He's actually right. And many of our own security specialists here in the United States said the same thing. And then our government and the warmongers and everybody else said, yeah, we don't care. We're going to do it anyway. And that's what kicked off this whole thing. Now, it doesn't mean that, that I, I like what Putin's doing. And it doesn't mean that I like, I like, you know, Russia's decision here. I like the Russian people. I like the Ukrainian people. You know, I've, I've been over to the, the Ukraine. I've got friends over there. Well, acquaintances. I made some friends while I was over there. Yeah, of course I care. But the problem is that you can't, uh, you, it, it would be, it'd be a lot like if China moved into Mexico and got a partnership with Mexico and then said, we're going to put, we're going to put defensive stuff on, on America's southern border. America would be like, no, no, no. I mean, look at the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, America was like, nope, you're not putting stuff on our border. Well, why is it okay to keep expanding then up against Russia? Uh, you know, that's what provoked them. Um, and again, I don't want to get all down in the politics of this, but 
you know, the, the media likes to paint everything as this simple little problem and, and here's what you need to know you more on. But if you actually look at a lot deeper into it and it takes work and you have to actually dedicate time and, and try to do a lot of searching so you can make sure that you're not uh, I just realized my camera's very low. I didn't realize it was so low. It makes me look like a little person. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Nah, screw that. We all hate little people. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke, I tell you. All right, there we go. Oh, look at me. I'm an adult now. Um, you know, you, you have to dig and you have to, and, and even then you have to dig through a dozen sources to try to find at least what you think is the truth of it. And let's face it, you could find the truth that would support either side nowadays. That's the problem. Uh, in July uh, of this year, Lira posted messages on Twitter and YouTube claiming he was going to try to cross the Ukrainian border into Hungary to claim asylum after being released from prison on bail. He has not posted on either platform since. So maybe, maybe he's in jail and maybe he's dirt. You know, maybe he's six feet under it by this point. Uh, who knows? They say in his final video message, Lira claimed that if he did not post after his Ukrainian attempt to cross the border, it would mean that he had been arrested again by the Ukrainian authorities. Lira said that in such event, he would die in prison and begged the public to raise a ruckus about his arrest. The former red pill style dating coach turned citizen journalist has maintained he was merely discussing a publicly available information about the war. The American State Department knows exactly who I am and the fate that awaits me, he said before attempting to cross the border. According to a copy of the apparent charges, the Ukrainian government alleged that Lira had criminal uh, intent aimed at the manufacture, distribution, materials containing justification, recognition as legitimate denial of the armed aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, which began in 2014, as well as justification, recognition as legitimate of the temporary occupation of the part of Ukraine territory. That's a lot of gibberish. Here's the thing, though. Let's face it. We know this, that if they want to arrest you on something— They'll knock on the door, they'll cuff you, they'll take you away, and then they'll lay things all over your building and your land and your apartment, and they'll take pictures of it. You know, they, the funny thing is the cops could open their trunk. I'm not saying this is what happened, but the cops can open their trunk, lay a bunch of their, their personal weapons across the desk or whatever, take a picture of it, and then put it back in their vehicle because it's actually theirs. And, and then they send that message out to the masses, and people are like, oh my gosh, look at that. Look at the equipment he had. He might have been, this is, people just do not understand how propaganda works, I swear. Uh, the charge sheet posted by Lyra contains zero mention of him ever working for the Russian government in any capacity, nor does it lay out any of the cr criminal acts other than statements he made on social media. The charges against me are just because of my opinion about the conflict. I did no harm to anyone, Lyra said. Uh, the citizen journalist uh, has also said that he has suffered violent uh, um, harm from other prisoners during his initial time in jail, making claims which cannot be verified that the prison guards outsource uh, hurting him to other inmates. Lira said that he believes the Chilean embassy did more to protect his welfare than the U.S. State Department. He added he believes the American government does not have an interest in his case because I'm, <laughs> I'm not a black lesbian druggie or a, a, a trans grifter. Besides, Victoria Newland hates my guts, or so I'm told. Uh, I, I actually agree with him on that one. A State Department, Department spokesperson told uh, Breitbart News in a statement uh, Tuesday, we are aware of the detention of Mr. Lira in Ukraine. We take our whole role in assisting U.S. citizens abroad seriously and are provoking all appropriate assistance. We're monitoring the situation. We have no further comment at this time. We, re, we reiterate our message that U.S. citizens should not travel to Ukraine. Okay, but he was already there. Uh, Lira's case has come into focus after apparent Ukrainian military spokesperson Sarah Ashton uh, Cirillo claimed last week to have given testimony against Lira while claiming to have met with him personally. Ashton Cirillo asserted that he was in good physical and mental health during their meeting. Okay, so maybe that's a good thing. Uh, now, Sarah Ashton Cirillo is a man, and you see a, a photo of that person here, uh, but you also notice the hair and you notice that the name is Sarah, and this is one of our representatives. This is our the, the Ukraine spokesperson. Uh, so yeah, that's where we are right now, where you've got a man rotting away because he said something against, uh, against the regime, and you've got a man named Sarah wearing a wig, uh, who's the, the spokesperson that says that they met up with Gonzalo. We're in a very weird time. 
Um, the spokesperson has the, the transitioning spokes, spokesperson has come under criticism from U.S. Senator J.D. Vance after clear, declaring on social media that Russian propagandists would be hunted down by the Ukrainian government. Uh, Senator Vance, Bright, Breitbart News reported, has written on the Biden administration, questioning if the White House is aware of any plans from the Zelensky government to wage uh, attacks on people exercising their rights to free speech. Uh, Ashton Cirillo, meanwhile, has asserted that Ukraine respects freedom of speech, but caveated that by declaring that those who spread supposed Russian propaganda cannot claim to be journalists and therefore will face imprisonment. Meanwhile, the Biden administration brought home five American detainees in Iran in exchange for releasing $6 billion, along with five Iranians. So that's the trade deal now that the United States will do. They'll say, okay, we want five Iranians, or we'll give you your five Iranians, and we will take back our five American citizens. Also, we'll give you $6 billion. That is the worst trade of all time. I'll trade you my pizza for, for your cheeseburger and fries, and also I will give you $4,000. That's like the equivalent of what they did. Our government is so inept. So that's, that's all we have right now um, on Gonzalo. Uh, you know, that apparently stunning and brave uh, Mr. Sarah Ashton Cirillo uh, has spoken with him and says he's up and aboard and, and, and he's alive. But beyond that, they're doing nothing to help him. But again, Brittany Griner. I, I think it's Griner, Griner. I don't, I don't, here's the thing. I don't care what her name is. Uh, I, I know that it was all in the news and it was nothing but 24 seven, let's get her back home. And we ended up trading a guy named the Merchant of Death <laughs> to, to get her, her back. And now she's back playing basketball and, and, and life moves on. And here Gonzalo, just for speaking his mind and sharing what he thought was going on over in Ukraine, uh, he's, he's tied up, you know, it just, you know, it, it just shows you where, what, I mean, right now, if you're just a, if you're male, if you're white, if you're not, if you're straight, uh, you are the dregs of the dregs in this society. I don't see, since that's the vast majority of, of, you know, men are actual men. And when you take both, you know, black, Latino and white men, uh, and you kind of add them all up, that is a very large portion of the working segment of the United States. I don't see how you keep crapping on them and saying they're horrible and they're part of the problem and think you're going to get anywhere. I think it's white males are something like 35, 40% of the population. You can't just crap on them constantly and think your, your country is going country is going to survive. But that's where we are now. That's where we are now. Um, I don't know. I, I might put the intro to this as odd man out. I might call this an odd man out section uh, segment because that's what I was going to name my news channel. And this is kind of news. I mean, it's both, you know, so if the intro to this is a little different, well, now you know why. I'll figure it all out. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Uh, I'll get this uploaded and I'll have another one out for you shortly.